If you're an athlete, you know the greatest motivator of all is the fear of letting your teammates down. After all, a team is only as good as its weakest link. So you owe it to those wearing the same jersey as you to be your best every time you step on the field. That's why there's no vape in team. When you vape, you can expose your lungs to toxic chemicals that can damage your lungs. If you're a step behind, the team's a step behind. Brought to you by The Real Cost and the FDA. Grey's Anatomy, the most iconic binge-worthy drama, is back, along with answers to the biggest cliffhangers. Will Teddy survive? Will Joe and Link finally find happiness together? Meredith returns along with fan faves like Arizona. You can now stream every episode of Grey's ever on Hulu and new episodes next day. Watch new episodes of Grey's Anatomy Thursdays at 9, 8 central on ABC and stream on Hulu. All right, what's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the TMOS Boss Show and in today's episode. So forgive me if I'm very hidden in this episode, but at the same time, like, you know, I'm here. I'm telling you guys, like, you know, what the business is. But at the same time, I feel like that this episode is going to be a very cryptic uh, episode where it's like you're going to be I'm, I'm talking on something, but I'm not talking on something. I guess if that makes sense. But anyway, so. The main idea behind this episode is a situation that one of my friends um, was a part of. I assume after today's events that the situation between them and their weird ex is over with. But I don't know, man. Like, I know people might chuckle a little bit at this next thing that I'm about to say. But hey, look, all right, it's something that, you know, it crosses my mind. But I watch a lot of movies, you know, I watch a lot of uh movies where it involves crazy exes and all that stuff i was a lifetime kid growing up like nah when you have a when you when the here's the thing when you live in a one bedroom apartment with your family and your mom got control of the tv and she's a fan of the lifetime channel you're gonna be watching lifetime especially when you ain't like my thing is this i have video games to play but i ain't feel like playing them i just felt like sitting around with the fam watching tv and then at times yeah when my mom got control of the remote she's turned to lifetime Guess what they showing on Lifetime? Crazy X movies. And they still show them Crazy X movies till this day. <laughs> so it's something where it's like, I see those movies. I see other movies where it involved like outside of the Lifetime channel and all that stuff where it, uh, you know, they, they talk on that. And I take notice of it. You know, I can't, the thing is, is this, there's movies that I remember watching years ago when I was a kid on like Lifetime and then other Crazy X movies that I think about still till this day. Cause I'm like, man, you know, it's something where I've said it before where it's like, um, I, I highly encourage women out there where if you got a crazy ex and they're um, wanting to do damage to you, no, do damage back. Take a bat, swing it on them. You know, I take a weapon that projects out, you know, a certain item and, uh, you know, do do something about it. Because, no, at the end of the day, I feel like that this person is going to lead into where it's going to be, you know, mental warfare to straight up physical warfare with you. And that's something where I'm like, you know, if you know at the end of the day you cannot handle yourself due to your current situation, then, yeah, go go get that training to where you can handle yourself. Whether you got to go to a range of some sorts or you got to go to one of those um fighting classes you know take do do something but at the end of the day it's like yeah you know you got some guys out there where it's like they they think that they could just pretty much walk all over somebody and it's like nah fam that that's not the case you know it's like you got people out there where it's like just just like how you got feelings that you don't want to get hurt they got them same type of feelings that they don't want to get hurt so what makes you, my thing is this, talking to those types of guys out there, what makes you think that it's okay for you to just be going around hurting people's feelings, manipulating them, taking advantage of them and all that stuff, but as soon as it happens to you, it's a problem, you know, and that that's something where it's like today, you know, seeing my friend going through what they went through and stuff, I'm like, man, you know, it almost brought a tear to my eye, and I don't even be usually uh getting teary-eyed like that. But I'm like, nah, bro. It no, it seriously it upset me. You know, seeing what my friend was going through. And then it's like, you know, then you see the person, then it's like they just seem like that they 
don't really care. They, they, it's like the, the, that's one thing that I'm all like, you know, the next time I talk with this friend, I'm going to make sure I mention that. And I'm all like, they didn't even apologize. They didn't like say no apology or nothing. They just all like, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm innocent pretty much. Like I, I didn't do nothing wrong. I, you know, I, I, I felt that, you know, bruh, no. And it's all like, even if you did feel that you didn't do nothing wrong, still, you as a man should apologize. If you, if my thing is this, if you're sitting like down with your significant other, you guys get into it, whether it's, yeah, argument of some sorts and that, and the individual starts crying, whether you're the man or the woman in the situation, man, man, woman, woman, I don't care. If you see your significant other crying due to something that you done said or did, or you're uh, causing them to overall be scared of you, because I, I feel like a relationship, it shouldn't, a relationship should never come with fear. All right, it should never come with fear. The only time when you and that significant other should be fearing for something is when you guys are at like, uh, you know, but it, it's like fun fear where it's like you guys are at like an amusement park, but it's during Halloween. You know, you guys are trying to kill a bug. It's like y'all are outside walking. You heard something rattling in the bushes. You don't know what it is, but your uh, flight done kicked in and you guys both are running down the street, but it's something that you guys do together as a team. I know I do a lot. I feel like I need to kind of add that into this. This, um episode too but also giving out relationship advice because i feel like there are some people out there where they feel that they could just pretty much walk all over their significant other and they think that that's okay that's not what a relationship is a relationship is not you walking all over your significant other and then them just being okay with it because i i feel like here's Here's this, uh, based on a true story movie that, yeah, it, um, at one point in time, it was a story and then they turned it into a full blown movie, but it was this, um, there was this woman, I think her name is Lorena Bobbitt. All right. Now this one is for the fellas. Now this, uh, more so like, you know, I guess if you guys is out there doing some crazy stuff to your significant other, yeah, watch the, or not, you don't have to watch the movie. Just read about it. Read, read about it on Wikipedia. That's how you know that situation is serious when it has its own Wikipedia page, right? But if you guys don't want to, oh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what that. I'm good for telling the story, all right? So anyways, there is this woman named Lorena Bobby. She met this man. Don't remember the man's name, but the man got a name, all right? They ended up getting married, but the guy was a little crazy. He thought he could put his hands on Lorena Bobby. Well, you know what? Lorena Bobby got sick of it. I don't know if she took some scissors. I don't know if she took a knife. Whatever it was, it was sharp enough to cut off that man's manhood. Okay, now let, let me repeat that part again. She waited for this man to go to sleep. She pulled his pants down, or I don't know if his pants is already down. I don't know what the situation is, because I have heard where people sleep naked. It's kind of weird. But anyways, besides the point, but she grabbed his manhood. You, you know, if, I, I guess like if you don't really know what I'm saying, you know how like when you go to the bathroom and you stand at the urinal and then there's, there's that part of your body that you grab and aim at the um, urinal so you can, you know, do, do the number one act. Yeah. That, that, that's called a manhood where I'm from, right? So anyways, she grabbed his manhood. She got a good grip on it too. Cut. I mean, cut. It's completely off. Then, allegedly, drove down the street with it and threw it in some bushes. That, it's stuff like that where I'm like, fam, what? <laughs> but at the end of the day, though, my thing is this, you know, I, I'm not going to be that uh, guy or I'm not going to be that person where it's all like, oh, he deserved it. But at the same time, do you think that would have happened if let's just say the relationship was normal, right? Relationship was normal. You ain't did nothing to this girl to cause her to do some stuff like that. You guys grow old, die together and you live a good, happy life. At what point in time? Is she supposed to cut off your manhood if you guys got a good relationship? There isn't no point in time for her to do that. But if the relationship, I, because my thing is this, I don't care what the situation is. For her to do some stuff like that, it had to have been serious. And then according to her claims, and that's something that's like, it, it's being taken more serious nowadays. But yeah, according to her, dude was, um, he, he was uh, putting hands on her. So she said, nah, bump all that. I ain't going to put hands on him. I'm just going, I'm going to do the one thing that he wouldn't expect me to do. All right. 
And then, sure enough, that man, he, no, he, yeah, I, I, I assume he woke up after the event. And then, uh, yeah, I, I think, I think they did say that he managed to get it, uh, like, surgically put back on. But it's like, bro, that was a close call. All right, that was a close call. It could have been a situation where they had to have done reconstructive surgery. And then, uh, yeah, you know, you you the only one that's looking at your manhood from this day forward. Because I'm like, if they, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, it's like how, I feel like doctors, they don't get that stuff done to how it's supposed to look. They gonna get it done to best of their ability. So I'm saying, it's like, it could be a situation like that. It could be a situation where... You know, there's probably stories out there where it's all like she ain't even going to do all that. She's just going to end the um end the guy's life. It could be a situation like that. People don't sit down and they don't think about those types of things. And then they wonder as they're taking their last few breaths or as they're fighting for their life, whatever the situation they end up being put in, then that's when they realize, well, maybe I shouldn't have been, um, you know, doing what I was doing. Maybe I shouldn't have been taking advantage. And that's like the main thing. I feel like that's like the main thing that people don't realize is like you're taking advantage of that person. That person can be out having a good relationship with somebody, but you're wanting to take advantage of them. Then on top of that, manipulate them into thinking that they're the ones that's in the wrong. But meanwhile, because my thing is this, you got to ask that question, the stuff that you be doing to them, all right? And if you're not doing that to them, then you ain't got nothing to worry about. But if you know that you're doing stuff to this person, do you think you would do that? Let's say, let's say if that individual, right, they got three um big brothers or three big sisters, whatever you know role you want it to be portrayed as. But let's just say they got three big people bigger than you in their life. Do you think you do that in front of them? Do you think you go out in public and be wanting to do some stuff? Because I guarantee and I promise you right now, if I see that, I'm all like, bro, you better hope you better hope you know something. Because I'm like, it's it's one of those things where it's like, nah, man, that stuff needs to stop. You know, and then it's messed up where it's all like that person, it's like they don't even feel safe going to their home. Because it's like you you want to do some old weird stuff, man. And I'm like, man, it's it's just crazy that people be carrying on like that. It's really insane. And then they wonder why they all, oh, every time when they get into a relationship, they always, the, the relationship pretty much fails. And I'm like, and that's something where, you know, eventually, at some point in time, I think that, you know, and that's, and that's the thing that's crazy about it. It's like, you would think you notice that stuff day one of it, not even day one, prior before you get into the relationship. Because that's something that I know people be thinking like, oh, well, you're not going to be thinking of like you having anger issues before you, no, yeah. No, you are. You are going to be thinking about um if you got anger issues or not prior before you get into a relationship. Because my thing is this. There's multiple stages that you go through before you get into a bona fide relationship. There's you just met this person for the first time. Now you kind of just talking with them, getting to know them right then and there, right? Now you guys are like, you know, you texting, calling. You, you're in that talking stage, right? Now you guys are preparing your first date. You go on your first date. You get to know them a little bit more. Eventually, after a certain amount of dates, you know everything you need to know about this person. You know everything from how they talk, from how they act. You know whether or not this person is going to upset you prior before the relationship. Because my thing is this. Let's say if I get into a relationship with a girl, right? And she says some things that upsets me. I'm like, hey, look, this relationship ain't going to work out. Um, no, I know it's it's not because you got my thing is this you sit down and think about it. I know people are going to be um looking and laughing about this and stuff or listening to this. But when I play a video game and I'm not trying to compare video games to women, but I guess just that anger factor. Right. When I look at a video game and I'm all like, is this a video game that I want to, you know, uh, play and things. Just like how I said, with like before you get into a relationship, there's stages that you go through. So before I get a video game, there are stages that I go through. I watch videos. I get other people's opinions. I'll see as much content as I need to see to see if this is a game worth getting into. And if it is a game that's not worth getting into, then I'm not going to fool with it. But if it's a game that's worth getting into, for an example, the one game that I've been playing a lot of is Helldivers. Now I'll admit, I've had my moments with that game and that's why i'm saying like you know with video games and women it's a little bit different and stuff but with uh well i mean at the end of the no there's some people out there they probably like they because now thinking about it i'm like i'm sitting here thinking if like if i'm one of those crazy exes and stuff yeah they'll they'll find like a comparison uh with video games but anyways 
But with that video game, Hell Diver, no, it's a game where it's all like, I like it. I think it's cool, and it's a game that I'm like, I'm investing a lot of my time into, you know? But with, yeah, with a video game, like, I guess, you know, people are trying to, like, give it a comparison, video games and women. It's like, yeah, you can uninstall and stop playing a video game at any given point in time, though, you know? But the thing is, it's like, you can't, my, if you... If you go, you can't break a video game, all right? You can't hurt a video game. A video game's a video game. But a woman, you know, your significant other, this person that you're calling your boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever the situation is. But I'm saying, though, you can hurt that person. You could break that person. People don't realize that type of stuff. They don't realize, they don't realize those types of things until it happens to them. And then they sitting down broken. And then that's when they want to apologize and be all like, oh, I'm sorry. And then the crazy thing is, is like they be wanting to apologize when the person's all like, you know, they fix themselves up. They're doing better now. And it's like, all you just want to do is just bring up some. My, it's one of those things where I'm all like, nah. And from like from this day forward, I guess if you are one of those individuals, what you need to do is leave that person alone. Leave that person alone because there is no reason for you to be contact, even if you are becoming a better person and all that stuff. Because I, I feel, look, my the thing is this: I'm a paranoid individual, and I think a little, I think everybody needs a little bit of paranoia in them, where it's like you sitting down thinking of some stuff, and you're like, mm, that don't seem right, you know. So if you trying to, I guess, apologize, trying to get back with that person, no, to that person, no, don't let them back in. At, under any circumstances i don't care what they say i don't care what they got going on do not let them back in under any circumstances i'm like you put yourself in that situation you could have had a good life but you messed it up so from this day forward you focus on yourself you focus on whatever you got going on if that person decides to go out their way to i guess fix up things because yeah you got some people out there they'll do some stuff like that kudos to them but other than that if that person had moved on let them move on they, it ain't, it, my thing is this, it's not hurting them by them moving on. It's only affecting you. So, and, and it's funny because I was just talking on this, this, this whole pain stuff, right? Now, how is it, why is it okay for you to cause them pain, but it's um, not okay for it? And I'm saying, it's like, I know that's not their intentions, you know, but if you're trying to like, again, play that whole manipulation game, like, oh, well, they are hurting me. All right, and? I'm all like, take it up with somebody else. Take it up with, like, God, you know, talk to God about that. Pray, go to church, do something. But I'm saying, at the end of the day, it's like, leave that person alone. If they might, if they go out their way to forgive you, that is their choice. That is what they got going on. But if you cause unimaginable pain to where they don't want to ever see you again, you brought that on yourself, all right? So, anyways, with that being said, I will talk to y'all later. Thank you guys uh, for watching and or listening. Stay tuned for the next episode, and peace.